everyone! Uh, it's Sunday. <laughs> I'm not gonna say Happy New Year because I said that um, when we had our first uh, like Ask the Drummer episode before, but still, you know, it's not Happy New Year. It's Sunday, which is a usual slot, and now it's 2 p.m. in, in the UK, which is 10 p.m. in Manila. Uh, still, because we're not into summer, British summertime yet. And also, I'm hoping that some of our friends in Toronto are watching us. So that's nine o'clock in the morning in Toronto. So welcome to another episode of Ask the Drummer. This is our um, second episode of the year. And it's also our second episode of the week as well, which is unusual for Ask the Drummer. But we've had one last Friday with Mary Ross. Well, she's unbelievable. Uh, really, really enjoyed that chat. But today we're going to have another amazing drummer. I've seen him a few times now and he's absolutely brilliant. So I'm really looking forward to chatting to him. Um, so I'm going to bring him on now. Um, my dear friends, please welcome Simon Jewers of The Embolist. Yay. Hi, <laughs> Hello, Simon. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year to you. Are you good? Yeah, yeah. I've, has it been so like, uh, I mean, I've had a really good start to the year, but how about you? Did you have sort of like a good start? Yeah, it's not, um, it's not too bad actually. Um, I'm a, I'm a teacher, so, um, I get quite a nice break over, um, over Christmas and New Year. So, uh, yeah. it's, it's not, uh, not too bad, but it, uh, you come back in January and it's, it's full and on it, again. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, it's good. You, have you been back? Did you, or is it next week that, no, 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 no. We yeah. started like yeah last week. Yeah, we're back in uh, back in full time. So yeah, it's good. Oh, wow. It was um, we had a couple of training days and then uh, the pupils have started coming back in. So yeah, yeah, it's full on now. It's good. Oh, see, wow. Well, well I'm going to ask you about um, after I've asked you about your drumming career. I'm going to ask you about your okay. teaching career later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you are so like. <laughs> So you're chatting to us from your studio, I believe. So yes. It looks really <clears throat> nice. You've got your drum kit there as well. So. I have, yeah. I've got an electronic kit, which I can, uh, well, I can practice on. I very rarely do, to be honest. I don't get enough time. But, um, yeah, yeah I've, uh, I've been slowly building the studio for about, for about four years on and off. Um, and, um, well, I shouldn't say this, but thankfully due to lockdown, I actually got quite a lot done. Oh, um, and then, think, and then this year I finished it off. I think but there's yeah, so, like the, there's quite a lot of so like of course bad things that happened during lockdown. But yeah, I believe yeah. there are also some people have done quite a lot of things like baking and like you said, yeah. done the studio and everything. So yeah, it was great. Like, you got yeah. to spend a lot of time with the kids and the family, and you know, going for lots of walks and yeah, you yeah. know, indulging your interests. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, well, well, that's well. I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad now that we're back to normal, as they say. Yeah, <laughs> going absolutely, to absolutely. And, yeah, it yeah. was uh, especially for bands. I mean, it was just awful. Um, we couldn't even get together. We tried a few virtual sort of online um, rehearsals and stuff like that, but it just too it's... much delay and everything. It just didn't work. <laughs> So uh, it, it all depends on so like your broadband as well. If your Wi-Fi is good, <laughs> yeah. Well, it does. Myself and Tony, the lead guitarist with the the Amberlist, were quite local to yeah. each other, so our connection was great. But Mick, um, lead singer, as you know, he lives um, he lives quite a way away from us, um, so oh, it was yeah. just useless. We could never never do it. Yeah, it didn't yeah. work. Well, yeah. the last time I saw the Amberlist uh, was mm. at the Talleyrand in yes Levenstum. yeah right, i always yeah. say it's not like manchester but in Hume because that's also Hume, yeah place. yeah yeah that was amazing really, it was a really I good really night really wasn't it that. yeah it was lovely yeah. there was loads of lovely people there um i mean the chesterfields were chesterfields were great they were um they were really on form they were really nice yeah. as well we had a good chat with yeah. them afterwards they were really nice and then um, also I, I think we played with them back in the day as well um oh, back really? in the sort of early 90s i think we played with them when i was in big red bus yeah, um, yeah. i'm pretty sure we played with them then but oh, wow. i can't entirely remember but i think we did yeah and that was the original so like members of the chesterfields at the time not the current lineup or is it no the... no well not the current lineup no yeah, um, yeah. no but the band themselves yeah yeah i think we did. yeah well no, memory's but... a bit hazy <laughs> 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 
I, I think we've got to say a massive thank you to Jack Harkins from mm. uh, he's absolutely. the one yeah because he's the one who puts all these um amazing so like events and gigs in um at the time yeah. so, Jack's yeah. absolutely incredible I was at um I was at a function last night actually um with one of your friends actually with Roland Scrub Jones oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, the topic of conversation was Jack. We were talking about Jack for about 20 minutes, actually, just saying how brilliant he was and the bits of music yeah. and um, his technique and stuff. As a bass player, he's absolutely amazing. So, yeah, yeah he's a really nice guy as well. So, yeah. yeah. We share a studio with him, so uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm going to say how good he is because we do share the studio. <laughs> yeah. well, anyway, so, uh, yeah, I do love Jack as well. He's mm. such a nice kid. I mean, I really love him. I love I, I love him himself. So like, but anyway, so um, welcome to Ask the Drummer. So episode Thank sixty-four you. is all Thank about you, you uh, Simon Thank Dewhurst. You. <laughs> uh, so you mentioned Scrub. Mm. Now Scrub is your cousin, isn't he? <laughs> he, he I, I say he's my cousin because it's easier than explaining the the complicated thing. It's not that complicated actually. His his sister is my my aunt so she's my auntie his sister his elder sister is my auntie we're, met, we're related via marriage so uh oh, yeah I but see. i've grown up with i've grown up with scrub and um you know i've known yeah. him since i was near high to a grasshopper so uh yeah, yeah. we've uh, we've always been around it's really it should have been your uncle instead of your cousin, isn't it? I suppose, yeah, he's nearer to my uncle than my cousin. It's just easy to explain, that's all. Because if you say cousin, people don't don't question it. They go, all oh, right, he's your yeah. cousin. They just don't even think about it. If I said he's my uncle, they go, well, how does that work? So, you know, I just I go with it. But he's I was with him last night for a while. We were going to have yeah. a good chat. So, yeah. So, yeah, he's great. He loves yeah. you as well. We were saying about it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, as, as you know, we've had Scrub here mm. on Ask the Drummer before. Yes, so watched it, yeah. He's, he's lovely. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he's just sort of like came online and he said, the uh, hikers. <laughs> <'Cause they're... laughs> oh, excellent. Nice one. <laughs> Hello, Scrub. I'm really glad that you joined us live. But, um, nice one, so, um, are you from a musical family? Uh, not particularly, to be honest. I think we always had um, we always had a lot of music in the house. So we always, my mum and dad, they would always have records playing, or the radio would always be on, or um, you know, when we went out in the car, the radio would always be on. It was music, music all the time. Um, they didn't. My, I think my dad tried playing guitar a little bit, but that was about it. My mum wasn't very musical. Um, but yeah, it was just always music around us, and they had quite sort of um diverse taste in in, in music, it was quite sort yeah. of standard for that time. A lot of old rock and roll, and um, my mum was like big into sort of Frank Sinatra and stuff like that. But I mean, all good classic sort of yeah, stuff, yeah. which is great. But it was uh, to be honest with you, it's my it's actually the uh, I was talking about Scrub, it's his brother in law, the, the, the gentleman that's married to um, his sister. Is my uncle Jim? He was a DJ in the um, sort of like the seventies, and he was big into his sort of, uh, you know, like Led Zeppelin. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. No, he wasn't a drummer, no, but he was a DJ. He used to do a lot of like Tamla Motown, and he did do like Tamla Motown nights, and he do like heavy rock nights, and he was quite a big DJ around Preston. Um, and he introduced me to loads of really random things when I was a when I was a child. So uh, I got to listen to sort of amazing. You know, like real hippie bands and like heavy rock bands and folk uh, artists and stuff like that. And he, he was really yeah. broad uh, schooling in uh, lots of different types of music, which I wasn't hearing at home. But I'd, every time I went around to my Uncle Jim's, he used to put on like really got, amazing. Yeah, yeah. He'd give me a big set of headphones, you know, like these, and he'd go, listen to this. <laughs> And then uh, I'd be like, whoa, it'd be like Black <laughs> Sabbath or something like that, you know, something really nice and heavy as a yeah. seven-year-old, and it used to freak me out. So it was great. So are, but, are yeah, you an only it. child? I like, am an only child, only yes. Sister? Yes, oh, so I you am. you didn't have, so, like, older sisters or brothers that no. will actually pass on their record collection to you? And no, <laughs> it was all down to me, I'm afraid. I had to pick them <laughs> all myself. I did print a couple off my dad, but that was about it, really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you're were you born and raised in Preston? I was, yeah. I was born and raised in Preston. Uh, I've returned to Preston. I've lived 
um, in quite a few different places, but um, I lived down south for what probably I don't know about sixteen years. Um, I went to college uh, down near Brighton. Uh, that's where I met well, my wife actually. Um, we're still together. Um, <laughs> we've been together for a long time, and um, oh, yeah, then I uh, moved to London. I was in London for um, ten years. Um, yeah. yeah, around North London and South London. Um, I lived in Australia for a little while with oh, Scrub's wow. sister. I lived with Hillary, I lived with Scrub's sister um, in Australia for a bit. Wow. Um, so, yeah, but um, we just, when we got married, we decided that, um, and, well, and I'll come to that a bit later, the record deal fell apart. Um, that was part of. Um, so when that record deal fell apart, I just thought, I'm done. Um, I think we need to go somewhere. And we were yeah. getting married and thinking about children and stuff. So we moved back to Preston because my wife, bizarrely, even though I met her on the south coast, she's from about half a mile from where I grew up. So oh. uh, we just we just gravitated together at a party and we're um, that was that. We were like, yeah. oh, OK, I know your friends and oh, I know your friends. And it was like, it was really weird. And then we just set it off and... That was it. So yeah, but we moved back to Preston. She had family here. I had family here. So, yeah. and it's nice. It's you know, Lake District's around, and Liverpool's down the road, and Manchester's down the road. It's you know, loads of gigs. You can go walking. Yeah, it's like awesome. True. Just love it. Yeah. So yeah. Well, you know, um, before I did so like asked the drummer, and before I went to um, what's it called <laughs> Preston Ball. <laughs> yeah, um, that's fair. Enough. Yeah, well, no, um, yeah. not the ferret, but um, the one that so uh, like Rico did. God, I can't believe oh, the Continental. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Preston Pop, it's called. But anyway, right. before before all that, um, mm. it's hard to believe that I didn't really know that Preston is actually uh, the land of indie pop. And it is. Also, <laughs> it, was, it really it is. Yeah. It's really awesome. bizarre. Yeah, it was only because I had to research about, you know, like scrubs, so like um, a lot of yeah. drumming history, and then uh, David mm. Chambers is as well. And yeah. of course, Mark Whiteside. Mark from, Whiteside, although, yeah. yeah. Although <laughs> Evil Blizzard is not really indie pop, it's not really considered. No, not more. <laughs> but yeah, um, but so <clears> like, <throat> uh, researching about Preston. I only mm. I only found out then that it was you know like so many indie bands that actually mm. came from from that place. From, yeah, from it's it's really weird. It's uh, <laughs> it, it, and it's still the same. You still you still see every. It's like nobody's retired. Mm. Everybody still does it. So everybody from the late eighties, early nineties that we were touring with and that we were doing gigs with back in the day, yeah, they're, they're yeah. all still doing it. None of them have stopped. So yeah. it was like um, when when you asked me to be on the podcast, I was like, "Oh, that's fantastic!" It's like you've got the full set now because you've got Dave Chambers, you've had Roland, you've had Mark yeah. Whiteside. It was only kind <laughs> of me that was missing off the list. So I was like, "Yay, I'm in there now. That's great." But it's oh, funny, no, really, because a lot of the stuff I did wasn't around Preston. But um, you know, anyway, I've come back and I'm still doing stuff yeah, now. So it's yeah. great. So I'm really glad that you said yes to ask the drummer. So thank you very much. But uh, no I'm going to ask you, um, what was Preston like when you were growing up? Because you're younger than them, aren't you? You are younger than Scott. I am younger than I am younger than them. Yes, not massively, but yes, I am. Um, it was great. I mean, because I was, I was 18 in sort of. I'm giving my age away. I was 18 in 1988. So. All of that sort of, you know, from 84, to, you know, that sort of teenage years, you know, 14 to sort of 19, it was all Smiths, Echo and the Bunny Man. Um, and then later on, it was like obviously coming into the Stone Roses and Acid House and all of that sort of stuff. It was it was just brilliant. And there was a couple of really good alternative sort of clubs um, in Preston. Yeah. And the pubs were always great. Pubs were always really, really good anyway, but there was a couple of really good clubs. Uh, Mick used to DJ at the best one, which was, uh, it was called Raiders, it's called Warehouse now, but Mick, lead singer at the Ambulist, he was a, yeah. he was one of the big DJs there. He DJed there for donkey's years. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it was really good. And uh, there were so many bands. Everybody was in a band. Um, yeah, yeah. It, That's it, so it, surprising because you know you only think of Manchester and Liverpool as so like mm. playing for so like the everybody yeah. is like you said, but yeah. Preston, 
surprisingly it was like that as well <laughs> uh, yeah i know i honestly don't know why to be honest it's just one of those areas i think i think you get certain pockets in certain places like wigan is is the same i mean that's some amazing bands come out of wigan and you know yeah, um yeah. you know like obviously sheffield and those sort of kind of bigger places but wigan's not particularly that big but some fabulous bands have come out of wigan yeah well, so the preston's the same it. we've not quite a broke yeah. broke as big if you know what i mean to be honest with you yeah, but it's, yeah. it's, it's um you know it's it was always good everybody was into it um you could go to gigs every night of the week it was great it's a pity it's not like that as much now to be honest but it's good so so you went to lots of gigs when you were a teenager, when you were young? Yeah, loads. Well, yeah. yeah, loads of stuff. Um, I mean, Preston had, um, well, it's U clan now, the university, but when it was Preston Polytechnic, they had a fantastic um, entertainment organisation there. They used to get all sorts of bands on. I saw, um, oh, I can't even think, I saw Lush. Uh, teenage fan club, one of your favourites. Oh my uh, god, yeah. Yeah, I saw a teenage <laughs> fan club there. They were yeah. absolutely awesome. Oh that was god, pretty yeah. early on. That was very early on. I think that was like first album. I think. Um, yeah. I saw um, who was that? I saw Public Enemy. Um, I in saw Preston. loads of them. Yeah, Public Enemy played in Preston. Um, it was crazy. <laughs> um, seemed like I don't know. There's too many. There was loads. Really random bands. Lush. Do you yeah. remember the band yeah. Lush? Yeah, uh, yeah. I saw um, them. Um, Mickey, Mickey Barani. Mickey, that's it. Yeah, yeah Mickey Barani, yeah. that's it. Lovely. Um, Lovely. They were great. Yeah. There was loads yeah. of stuff in Preston. It was awesome. But um, I, we just didn't really get any of the any of the big, like the big names, if you know what I mean, in that period. We, we had a couple of good venues, but they just didn't yeah. seem to book them. Like the Guild Hall is massive, what? but... Um, well, again, they, we, they were big, weren't they? Yeah, I know, but it was it was very oh. random. You'd get these random acts, and occasionally you'd get one really big artist, and then it'd be loads of boring old sort of, you know, quite safe music rather than sort oh, of alternative right, yeah, or yeah. modern yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, but it was it was good. It was okay. Yeah. So, but um, what what got you into drumming? I mean, when you were going to gigs, did you sort of, like see someone drumming? I mean, did did no. sort of, like scrub? <laughs> did, no. Did you sort of, like influence no. <laughs> I mean Scrub was an influence yes but it was I, I hate to say this it was out of necessity I'll be honest with you uh, I became a drummer um because I was a guitarist I started as a guitarist um oh, okay. I um myself and my best friend um a chap called Martin uh, Swarbrick I was in a band with him probably from the age of about 13 or 14 um and we had a drum machine so I'd play guitar Martin would play bass and we had a drum machine <clears throat> and we used to do a lot of like Joy Division and that sort of very factory industrial Manchester kind of sound with a bit yeah, of yeah. random indie stuff and slightly poppy. We were only, you know, 13, 14, 15, whatever. We were doing that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah. Lots of covers. We were trying to write our own stuff, but it wasn't particularly great, if I'm honest with you. Um, and we st when I went to college, we started hanging around with... Um, couple of other guys who were still around on the Preston scene. Um it's a guy called Mick Southworth. We, we we joined up with him. He played guitar and he was absolutely amazing. Um I think he sort of he hangs around with the you know like the evil blizzard guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. With Mark <laughs> yeah. and uh, Pete, Pete Brown, Brown and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all those guys. Um so he was he plays with those but he, I would think I was one of the first person people that been Preston I ever met him because he, he just moved to the area. And he was just staggeringly good on guitar at the age of 17. He was like a mini Hendrix. He was absolutely oh, amazing. Yeah. He still is. He's incredible. Um, yeah. So we joined up with him and we kind of just used to hang out. And it was always about 12 guitarists, one bass player and no drummer. Um, so it would be just lots of lads with the guitars. And um, we managed to strong arm one of our friends whose brother had a drum kit to come to a practice. Anyway, the drum kit ended up being delivered and he never turned up i don't know how that worked out um so oh. anyway it's just a case of oh god i'll play the drums i'll so i got some sticks and just literally started playing the drums it was just by accident and about 10 minutes in somebody went oh actually you're all right at that you might want to keep doing that and i, I actually was like i actually quite like this i've never played <laughs> a kit before but i just thought you know i'll have a go it'll be fine so yeah. um and that was it and it was just by necessity and from that point on was a and, and then when you're surrounded by other guitarists that are vastly better than you, I just thought, 
I think I need to hang this off. <laughs> I'm not going to be a guitarist anymore. I'm going to stick to being a drummer, I think. Yeah. So that was it. And then, you know, it slowly started progressing from there. And, um, yeah, we, we, we formed a sort of little band um, yeah. called the Monstrous Fandango. Um, what a name. That was a lovely no, name. Yeah, it was all crazy names back then. So, um, yeah, and uh, weirdly, one of the first gigs that we ever did was with uh, was with Big Red Bus, supporting Big Red Bus. Um, the night before they'd supported the Stone Roses, I think it was the night before, or a couple of nights before, they'd done the gig with the Stone Roses, or one of the gigs with Stone Roses. And um, the I don't know, I think it was like two, three nights later or whatever, maybe the night after, they did yeah. a gig in Preston again, and um, we supported them because obviously I knew scrub anyway and, uh, yeah, and Mick. Yeah, yeah. Mick was actually um, a lecturer at the college uh, that I was at at the time and I, I knew him via scrub obviously and used to oh, hang out with Mick occasionally and this and I said oh, I've got a band so he's like all right yeah cool so that's how we ended yeah. up playing with them so um, yeah we did quite yeah. a few bits on the Preston scene but uh, until Big Red Bus that was kind of it really just lots of little yeah. gigs it was fun though it was good interesting yeah well, you're obviously a natural sort no, of thank player you. of drums. Thank so, you. Um, but did you uh, ever have lessons or did you get any sort of like drumming no. lessons from anyone? Or no, just never any them? lessons. <laughs> uh, I did. I, I tried. <laughs> I tried to have some lessons. Um, when I was in the band in London, um, we, well, yeah, because uh, we, we, there was a lot of, uh, professional discussions that were had so everybody was like right you're gonna have singing lessons you're all gonna have instrument lessons um you're all gonna be sort of styled and all that sort of stuff so um yeah, it was like yeah. okay i'm not really bothered but i enjoyed the singing lessons actually much more we i did i did have some singing lessons which was great um but the drumming lessons i just i didn't really get into it to be honest but they added two or three i am i'm the least i'm the least drummer drummer that you've, that you've probably had on the show uh i just don't ever do anything with it some people talk about the technical stuff of drumming and i yeah, just yeah. You know, i don't i don't know i just i just go with it yeah so. it's all those sort of like paradiddles and all those rudiments and all those things yeah funny you should say that somebody mentioned i think it might have been paradiddle or something like that somebody said that at a show uh one of the sound guys went uh can you just do a paradiddle and i was like I don't know what one of those <laughs> what? is. I can hit some drums if you want. And he was like, yeah, that'll do. So uh, I know nothing about theory. I can't read music. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can play loads of instruments, but I can't read music. Um, and it's just, I, you know, I just like getting the job done. You know what I mean? I just, I go with the song and I feel what the song is and try yeah, and play yeah. along to that. I don't really have a preconceived idea of, what I'm supposed to be doing, I just kind of go with it. Really, <laughs> is the thing. I react. I like reacting to the vocals on songs. So whatever the, the like the vocal line is or whatever, I try to kind of go with that. I've always been into drummers that are a bit more um, organic, if you know what I mean. Even if they speed up and slow down slightly, or they've yeah, got a different yeah. feel. Yeah. Um, like John Densmore out the the Doors. He was he was always one of my absolute favourites because if you listen to a Doors record, it he really follows the vocal line. He doesn't follow the other instruments. It's, uh, oh, right. you know, as Jim Morrison's like rising, you can hear the, you know, the cymbals start getting more and more and more, and then he'll speed up and slow down where it's appropriate. It's, uh, it's, it's really interesting. I've always liked drummers like that. So Yeah, that's mm. brilliant. Well, um, before we continue, uh, Aiden mm. said that sound and vision, sounding and looking okay. I mean, Aiden is happy. <laughs> Aiden is right. my husband. Cheers. And he's the tech support. So I'm really glad that Cheers. he's saying that it's, it's looking up, sounding and looking okay. Oh, that's okay. good. But, no, um, <laughs> well, you mentioned that um, uh, Mick from The Ambulist, mm. Mick Shepard, yes. uh, that yes. he was a lecturer and I mean, yeah. he was like, he was a lecturer and a DJ and also in Big oh, Bird yeah. Box, so he was doing it yeah, all yeah, yeah. So, like, that, that's oh, Mick amazing. Was, oh, Mick still is. I mean, Mick was the whole package. He was great. He was, you know, cool lecturer at college and he was in a band and he was DJing and he was like, <laughs> yeah, he was the whole thing. He um, he still is. Yeah. Well, um, you're also, you... Um, I don't know. Did you, I don't know if you actually replaced or because I found out that uh, one time 
Mm. I sc- couldn't do um, the drumming for um, Big Red Bus because of some work commitment. So yes. you kind of saw like step down for for, for him. yeah, but then yeah, you ended for quite up... a for quite a long time. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah it was uh, it was it was a weird sort of setup at the time. We uh, the band I was talking about before, uh, Monstrous Fandango. We shared a studio yeah, yeah. with Big Red Boss, and um, I, I know Scrub was he had some work commitments and things like that, and he said, you know, they've got a lot of dates coming up, and I can't do all of the dates i can't play all of these gigs um because yeah. i think he couldn't get time off work or whatever it was so he couldn't do it so he said listen why don't we try and if you start sitting in on some of the rehearsals and you know i'll show you the the song and then you have a go at the song and then sort of slowly build up learning them so he kind of mentored yeah, me yeah. into playing um the big red bus songs that he was playing at the time um and you know integrating me into the band um it was really good because it was a nice slow sort of feed into it if you will so we did that for a little while and then he was like okay i can't do these gigs so i'd go and sit in and do the gig but um the uh <laughs> and, uh, the, he kind of then took a back seat um he did occasionally come in and do the odd show or whatever, but it was he, he pretty much kind of committed to doing work. He had, you know, I think it was like yeah. his own family coming and stuff like that. So it was, it was a kind of focus for him. And I was like a free agent at the time, so it was fine. I could go at a drop of a hat, you know, because somebody could get yeah, yeah. phone me up, and I'd be, you know, in the car and I'd be at a gig twenty minutes later. It wasn't a problem for me. So yeah, uh, yeah it was great. But um, we had some really interesting. Had some really interesting stuff early on with Big Red Bus. Um, the the first gig I ever ever did, he couldn't do it. They just played a couple of nights previous, I think it was, or maybe a couple of weeks previous, with a band from Ireland called the Sword Doctors. Oh yeah, uh, have, yeah. You ever, have you heard the Sword Doctors? Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, I've heard of uh, the Sword Doctors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're very very bizarre because they didn't um, they didn't seem to travel very well like the music. But Ireland, they sold more records that year than you two. They were massive. I'd, I'd never even heard of them. And uh, everybody's like, oh, no, they're really massive. I was like, I've never heard of them. Um, so I can't remember what happened, but the, um, it was like literally I'd been rehearsing with the band for a couple of days. And then yeah. uh, we got a phone call saying, can you do a gig with the Saw Doctors? I was like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Um said, where is it? And he said, oh, it's in London. I was like, oh, right, okay. So we'll, we'll get in the van. We'll travel down to London. And they said, yeah, it's two nights sold out at the Town and Country Club the forum now um sold out oh, yeah. totally sold out and um i was thinking that's a really big venue isn't it and i'd never played in front of more than about 20 people probably i don't think i've ever, ever done a big gig in my life and we got there and the forum i think at the time it was something like 1800 or 2000 capacity oh. and this was two nights sold out yeah so yeah. i was just like oh man i walked on stage and i just was absolutely blown away but um it was fantastic it was the one of the best gigs i've ever ever experienced in my life they were so nice the band were amazing yeah um but it was it was just incredible you know it was going from playing in pubs to going to one of the biggest venues in the uk at the time to play with the biggest band in ireland at the time um, and then you had like sound guys coming and going. How do you want your uh, kick drum to sound? And uh, you know what? What you know? Give me the breakdown of some of your songs so I know where I can put effects in and stuff like that. And I was like, we've never had a sound guy before. <laughs> so to start talking about you know the requirements of my music to uh, yeah, yeah. a sound guy, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Just do what you want. <laughs> well, I'm gonna say that. Um, Scrub actually missed out on that one because it was you who played with Big Red Boss, but then yeah, yeah. they actually, but they supported uh, the Stone Roses. Yes, and yes, they did. You, yeah, yeah, you were. I missed that. I was at the gig. I was at the gig. I was oh, you at the gig. But the gig I missed, yeah, yeah, I was at the gig. Oh yeah, that was a gig. That was an amazing yeah. gig. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was there with all my friends, and uh, we sort of hung out with a band, of the um, you know, with Big Red Boss a bit and stuff. Um, yeah. But it was just after that. That's when I joined. Uh, they just finished doing all the Stone Roses dates, um, and then it was a little bit later, probably a couple of months after that. That's when I joined um, Big Red Bus yeah, and went yeah. through um, t- went through till the end, till its natural its natural end. Actually, yeah. and it's funny actually. I've, I, I hate. I've, it's like a, I 
I've pre-prepared this. I actually found because I, I brought my vinyl out the attic last week, and I actually found. I was. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. I don't know if you've got this one. That's the second single, isn't it? It is. Yeah, that's the, the one that I'm on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was gonna say. I was actually gonna ask you about that because yeah. I remember when right. I went to Action Records and I met yeah. Gordon for the first time. Yeah. He's amazing i mean, he's I mean he's the one who, yeah he's the one who released all the um big red bus so like yeah, records. he is so i managed to buy a copy of the album mm. and the first single which is yep. so well, yeah <laughs> but he i think i remember him offering me the second single <laughs> but well, he's I'm, probably got loads of them in a the crate in the back that's what <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was a lot more expensive than the first single. And All right, okay. It, yeah. Um, well, I'll tell I you thought, what, next time I see you, next time I see you, I will bring this and I'll give, I'll give you this. Because <laughs> I've got about four, so uh, I'll give you one of these. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's very rare, remember, very rare. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's what he said to me, that it's quite rare. So it's a bit expensive. <clears> and I was sort of like, I've got all these... Yeah, you know, loads of records I've already sort of like got. And I said, I'll just get the album and yeah. the first single because they're yeah. cheaper than, <laughs> than the rare you can one. Go, you can go crazy with vinyl, <laughs> can't you? And you go in action, it's um, there's so much good stuff in there, it's, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. But it's only sort of like now that I found out that that's actually where you were sort of like the drummer of you know, mm. the sort of like the second single that Big Red Boss yeah. released. So. Yeah. So, yeah, um, we did loads of tours and stuff like that. I mean, we did a double header yeah. tour um, in Norway. We, I, I, Scrub um, played the first set, sort of played their old, like the, the original stuff. And then the second set, um, I went on. Uh, I drummed all the new stuff. And he, he did like uh, a bez, you know, with the maracas and yeah, yeah. sort of tambourine and all oh that sort God. of stuff. <laughs> yeah. It was fantastic. We did a tour in Norway. Um, we did yeah. a couple of tours in Norway and a, a couple of tours of France. Um, so yeah, it was great. But yeah, we thought yeah. you know we always got on great. It was not a big group of lads, you know. It was it was fantastic. And you're massive in Norway in those days, big red bus. I mean, <laughs> we got interviewed live on Radio One Norway. Uh, myself and Mick went on. Um, it was like apparently it was like the biggest radio show um, at the time. It was um, yeah. yeah, it was like Radio One Norway, uh, and they had posters everywhere. They were like. They were mad for us. I think. They, I think. I think all I need. I think the first single. I think that charted in Norway quite quite well. I think yeah, there was a yeah. weird little following of Big Red Bus for some reason. I don't know what exactly. I think some of the guys from Norway had been to Preston uh, Poly as it was then, and I think they'd taken a lot of Big Red Bus back with them. So um, we had a bit of a micro following in in Norway, but we did some yeah. amazing gigs there. We played with. Um, there was a band at the time, I think they were called Radio Phantoms or something like that. Uh, and they were massive. They had like number ones in Norway, you know, every single that they put out. And they supported yeah, yeah. us when we went there. So uh, we were blown away by the response. It was packed every night. It was great. Well, I think I mentioned this to Scrub that I actually mm. um, only got to know a big red bus thanks to Fire Station Records mm. um, in Germany because they have released yeah. this one, this album. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yep. and yeah, that's the way I was so like, oh, I got a copy of it, and I thought, they, they, this is amazing, you know, because, <laughs> like, yeah, like I said, I mean, I didn't really know about Preston being, no. <laughs> being London Music. <laughs> no, a lot of people don't still, <laughs> to be honest. But yeah, it's, uh, it is a, it's a real microcosm of, uh, of you know, alternative uh, things and it is culturally as well I mean it's just not um you kind of think it's a bit of a backwater but um I mean I'll, I'll talk about the the album that the amber list of, of we did last year um that was like a proper local collaboration and some of the people that worked with us on that um I mean even yeah. the, the the chap who did the artwork for the album he works with um flaming lips he works with oh. um Richard Hall he works with Arctic monkeys yeah, yeah. Queens of the Stone Age um you know so these are all this is a local artist he lives just you know half a mile down the road from me and you yeah, know there's yeah. massive promoters and managers and 
all sorts of music industry staff just in Preston. And it's, it's you don't kind of expect them to be here, but they are. It's great. <laughs> yeah. well, well, obviously, it's not like that's where they want to be. It's all like a place. And again, I was be. talking about Action Records. That's still going. Mm. Yeah, it's like 40 yeah. Years. I believe it's. Uh, oh yeah, it is. Yeah, my my son goes now. My son goes and gets his records from Action Records, and yeah, yeah. you know, occasionally get the chance to go down. But he, he he's there and uh, he loves it. So yeah, it's great. It's a yeah. great place. So uh, when Big Red Bus, because um, shortly mm. after you joined them, they've actually sort of like you know they've disbanded and everything. So what did you do after that? Did you continue um, drumming for other bands? Or? Well, can I, I think it was about. I think I was about a year I was in Big Red Bus. Um, and then when it it kind of came to a, a bit of a natural end, I think we'd the, the, we always got lumped in with that sort of Manchester um, sort of pop baggy kind of yeah, thing yeah. that was going on. Um, and I think there was just too many things going on at the time. I think, you know, like family commitments and one thing and another. And it just got to the point where, um, and I'd, I'd also got offered a, a place at university as well. Um, so it was one of those where we were just like, let's just kind of call it a day sort of thing. Um, it was all very amicable. We just decided that was enough, really. Um, so I moved uh, I moved down to university. Um, and I was in a couple of, you know, like, I'd say they were bands, but there were a couple of rehearsals with a couple of bands uh, that we didn't really do anything. Um uh, and then I ended up being in a band with a, a load of guys who basically wanted to be you too, <laughs> which was not really my, not really my thing. But they wrote songs like they were, um, they were like you two covers, but they weren't. They were original songs, but they sounded like they were written by you two, um, which was which was fine and it was fun. And we did a couple of battle of the bands and all that sort of yeah, uh, yeah. around Brighton and one thing and another. Um, but it was it was it was good fun. Um, but I'd kind of just I'd moved away a little bit at that time, and I wasn't really that bothered. Uh, and it wasn't until I'd moved to London a few years later that um, that I picked it back up again. Um, and again, that was by accident. Um, yeah. I was working with somebody, and they just uh, they said, "Oh, my boyfriend's in a band, and they're looking for a drummer." I said, "Oh, I used to be a I used to be a drummer," and uh, they're like, "Oh, you know, he's really." really music's really good you want to go and like check him out so and i arranged for a meeting one night we met in the pub a chap called crispin um and uh, i just thought this guy's great and i've not even heard any music he was just such a nice guy i was like i hope his music's <laughs> as good as he is because he's cool <laughs> yeah. um and then that was it we just started hanging out and um we, we you know there was a few different things going on it's quite complicated but um there was mainly myself and him He'd already been on a major label that had, had been he'd been dropped from this major label, um, which I'm not allowed to talk about. But um, he um, had a friend who played um, piano. He played Fender Rhodes piano, so there was me drumming, guy on Fender yeah. Rhodes, and Crispin playing the guitar. Yeah, um, yeah. And it was like instrumental sort of music we were doing, um, which was very abstract, very sort of okay. weird jazz um all sorts of stuff it was we used to like take genres and mash them together um really <laughs> weird um we, had, we didn't we barely ever did anything at all we just rehearsed because it was just fun so that's what we did and we only did a couple of gigs um we were called what were we called then uh bond on blonde we were called at the time oh. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't pick the name it wasn't my choice oh. um but um, the, the guy who played the Fender Rhodes, he, he was just brilliant. He's a multi, multi-instrumentalist, absolutely incredible guy called Ben Jacobs. And um, he came to us one day. We, he used to make a lot of electronic music. And he came to us one day and he said, uh, I think I'm going to call it call it a day on the band. So we said, okay, fine. Yeah, no. Like, he said, uh, I've got a record coming out. I'm like, all right, okay. Uh, he said, yeah, I've just got a record deal with Warp Records in Sheffield. Um, they're going to put my stuff out. And we, I was like, what, with Aphex Twin? He's like, yeah, basically. Oh. I'm like, what? Anyway, he's got <laughs> records out on Warp Records. And he's absolutely amazing. Uh, so we're like, yeah, brilliant, oh. brilliant. Um, and then he, um, 
he, uh, he we used to hang out with him still. And he said, oh, he said, I've left Warp. I was like, what do you mean? He said, I've got another record deal now. I was like, what do you mean? He said, oh, I've, uh, I'm with Domino Records. I was like, Domino Records? They're very, very probably bigger. And he's like, yeah, I know. So he's got loads of records out on that. A guy called Max, he went under the name Max Tundra. Um, it's very abstract electronic stuff, but uh, I'll send oh, you a link. You definitely have a listen to some of his stuff. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But it's like Aphex yeah. Twin, and it's, uh, it's crazy. But, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, Aphex Twin, I've got to so, sell, like, so, now that you mentioned it, they have this yeah. little, like album cover. Mm. Which is kind of it was scary. I remember going yeah. to work one time, yeah, and yeah. it was just there, and it was all sort of like thinking, "This is so, this is yeah. creepy. I don't want it." So. Yeah, it <laughs> Anyways, is. Anyways, so carry scary. on. Yeah, carry yeah. on. So, what happened with this with this band that you? Were, uh, well, um, the long and the short of it was we couldn't. We we kept trying different vocalists. Uh, we, we must have auditioned about thirty or forty vocalists and they were all either very militant uh, and they wanted to just i'm just playing this type of music which we were like oh, not really what we wanted okay, to do yeah yeah um or well, they were just weird so we kind of didn't want them either but one of the, one of the chaps um that we knew um he was a nice guy um he came down one day and he said i've written some songs do you want to try and have a listen to these and we're like yeah yeah so he started playing them we're like these are really good so we sort of made full songs out of them. And he was like, these are brilliant. These are really good. All right, yeah, cheers. Um, he said, you know, are you interested? Do you want to join the band? He said, oh, I'd love to be in the band. We're like, oh, fantastic. He said, yeah. but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to South America for a year, like next week. And we're like, oh, great. <laughs> so anyway, he, uh, he went to South America. We kept trying and auditioning people and one thing and another, and it never worked out. Anyway. A year later, he came back from South America, or was it, it might have been nine months or something, I can't remember. He came back from South America, and he was like, do you want to be in the band? He's like, yep, definitely. All right, cool. So we started doing it. Um, so we worked a couple of songs. Somebody said to us, do you want to do a gig? So we were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is after about two weeks. So we did yeah, um, yeah. We did a we did a gig, which was one of these showcase gigs. You know, they have these like big you know, they get loads of little unsigned bands. It's very sort of London, yeah, yeah, yeah. trendy. They get all the A&R people and all that sort of stuff there. And we did, this was two weeks in to rehearsals. We went and did the gig. And as the, as we finished our set, about, about eight people came onto the stage and said, right, here's my business card. We, we want to speak to you like immediately. Um, and these were all like big A and R guys. We were like, really, this is mental. Um, um, so anyway, we had a few discussions and one thing and another. And then um, was it a week after that? I think we we're in the headquarters of Sony Europe, and they were offering us stuff. Uh, and then when you know the following day was another meeting with another record label, and they were interested yeah. in offering us something else. Uh, and then we were getting managers phoning us up, um, U2's um, management company, Mother Management, they um, were phoning us from Ireland saying, we, we've heard about you, we want to meet you and all this other stuff. And it was like, it just from nothing for two weeks, it just went just insane. Um, so we, we, got a, we got a manager, um, you know, Feeder, you know the band Feeder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rogers yeah, and all yeah. that. So yeah. um, we signed with their management uh, company, and uh, he was putting us out to lots of different people and one thing and another. And, and anyway, we ended up getting um, signed on what they call a pre-production contract to a, a, a major label. Um, so that basically meant that we were there developing music, writing music, uh, doing demos. Um, yeah, it was yeah. great. Well, I mean, we recorded in Island Records basement studio, which is where Bob Marley recorded, Eric Clapton recorded. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were in with the studio time with PJ Harvey, um, in between her sessions. Um, uh, Metropolis Studio was recording in all of like the really big studios in, in London and stuff. And, you know, it was all being paid for. It was great. And we were getting a salary. <laughs> we were all getting paid doing it. Yeah, um, yeah. And it was great. And we were getting loads of good gigs. And they were booking us with, um, you know, good support slots with uh, various people. We played with, um, who did we play with? Uh, Catastrophe Wife. 
Um, you Babes in Toyland. Do you remember Babes oh, in yeah. Toyland? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we played with them. We played yeah. with um, who else did we play with? I'm so this is like now. early nineties. Like this 90s? is mid nineties. This is mid nineties. Yeah, mid nineties yeah, mid mid yeah. at this point. Getting sort of yeah, mid to sort of later nineties. Um, and we had like meetings with uh, Brian Molko out of uh, Placebo. He wanted to <gasps> sign us. Um, there was loads of loads of people like that, and you know, just hanging out with people all the time. It was great. Yeah. Um, and we had um, we had an accountant who was the Rolling Stones accountant, um, which was incredible. crazy. It's incredible. He told us he told us some stories that I cannot <laughs> repeat. Um, and then um, we had a we had a we had a lawyer as well. Uh, we went to our lawyer's office. And yeah. we, we got in the lift um, to go up to the lawyer's office. And as we got in the lift, Elton John got in with us, with his one of his minders. <laughs> and uh, we were all, it was all that sort of, uh, just all looking at each other, sort of going, like, what do we do? <laughs> do we say hello? <laughs> oh, it was just a lot of, uh, all right, like nodding uh, yeah. at each other sort of thing. And Elton's trying to avoid eye contact. And he's like, oh, all right, okay. Um, but it was it was crazy. But it was just it was really surreal at the time doing all these things with all these, you know, like kind of celebrities, but they're just normal people. You just happen to be in the same environment as them. That's yeah, all it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that went on for a while. Um and it was all it was all good. It was all going good. We had res residency at um, the windmill in Brixton for a while, um, which is a really great place. Um I think Black Midi were resident there for a bit, um, a year or two ago. They're one of my favourite bands at the minute, Black Midi. Love them. Yeah. Um, and then it was, uh, yeah, it was all going well. And then they said they were going to sign you, they, they were going to sell you basically to another American label, massive American label, really massive American label. Um, and you're all going to have to move to Los Angeles. Um, nice. with Effectively, they were kind of, kind of selling us as, as a, a version of Coldplay, if you know what I mean. We were going to yeah, go over yeah. and be a huge English band yeah, in America. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then at the last minute, um, it all horribly fell apart. <laughs> so uh, there were some issues. Um, that, is, it, that is such a shame. But uh, It's, it's oh, a well. reoccurring story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it happens to musicians all the time. So yeah, yeah it's, uh, the the person I felt the most sorry for was actually for our guitarist, which was this uh, chap called Crispin. Yeah. He'd already been on one band and been dropped um, from a label. He was with us. We were just about to do it, and then we got dropped because yeah. there was problems with the band. So the band split up, and then he formed another band after I after we'd split up, and um, he, they found a very young, talented female. Um, vocalist and um they did loads of gigs they were amazing and um the record co record company said yeah we're going to sign you so they signed them and they said right we only want the singer we don't want you so they scrapped oh, the band no. and they kept the singer um and it was oh, paloma no. faith so he was he discovered his band discovered paloma faith the big you know pop Whoa. singer <laughs> oh yeah so uh, he's lost oh, that three God. times so I, oh I love God. the man to bits, but he's got the worst run of luck out of anybody I've ever met what? musically. Yeah. But he's he's done well. He, he owns a massive guitar shop in London now, and he's absolutely brilliant. Um, if you get a chance, if you're a guitar player, Regent Sound uh, Studios, uh, it's where the Rolling Stones used to record, um, but it's a yeah, guitar shop. Yeah. It's a brilliant place. So he's doing, so, yeah. he's doing well. So He's, he's, he's doing well, right. yeah. He's yeah, doing well. Yeah. I saw him a little while yeah. ago. We go down to London every now and then to see him. We take the kids, and uh, he always yeah. makes a fuss. So it's really nice to see him, yeah. But it's so like one of those things, really, that for every band who makes it big, there are like yeah. hundreds There's of There's so people. many. Yeah. It's all, There's like, so many, many that don't. don't. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's really it's bizarre sometimes... that you... Go on. Yeah, go ahead, right. yeah. No, sometimes I was going to say that sometimes it makes you feel like, especially after hearing them, that they should have been as big or they should mm. have been bigger, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. I know. This, um, 
Um, there was saying that you, you'll know them. Did you, uh, the real people from Liverpool, of course, yes. yeah, yes, the Griffith yeah. brothers. Oh, well, we played with those. Yeah, we yeah. played with them in. Um, and this yeah. is back in big red bus times. Um, we played with them, and um, I, I used to love the real people. I thought they were fantastic, and saw them yeah. live, and they were just stunningly good live. The vocals were, the harmonies were amazing. Yeah, All, yeah. you know, the, they were really good musicians. Yeah, and I couldn't believe they didn't sell more records. I was like, "Why is this not? Why is this band not massive? They get like as lower chart hits and stuff, and they did quite well and whatnot." Yeah, yeah. And I know they've gone on the big record producers, and they've had you know successful careers. But as the real people, I thought they should yeah. do loads more than this. They're brilliant, and if you yeah. saw them live, they were blisteringly good. But well, um, that, I don't that's know. True. I know what you mean because it's like I'm. Um... Me and myself, I'm actually late to the real people appreciation mm. society because um, right. I, I I got to see them so like play um, live. I think it was last year or um, no, two years ago, and okay. they were amazing. The Griffiths mm. brothers, yes. I'd say. I mean, people have told me about this as well. This should have been as massive or even yeah. bigger than. The Gallagher brothers. Uh, uh, oh yeah, totally. Oh like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know when they went obviously to do um, oh, what was it? Uh, was it Supersonic? Was the first Oasis single? It was recorded by the Griffiths brothers. Yeah, and all the, the harmonies yeah. on it. You can tell it's all literally, yeah, uh, very carefully worked out as as brothers yeah. do, I guess. But yeah, yeah, their stuff was incredible. Well, it's, yeah. um, it's like Shaq. It's like your friend Mr. Mick <laughs> It's no, like Shaq, Shaq <laughs> just an awesome band. They were fantastic. Yeah, yeah. they should they have been number one like, every week. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're all doing really well now. Anyways, I mean, it's the real people. They're still playing. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they're real good. And of course, Michael Ed and the Red Elastic Band. Mm. Obviously, like, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how many times have you seen them this year? <laughs> But anyway, so well, this is about you, so we'll sort of like okay. go back to Sorry. sort of like your story. So okay. after that, um, because yeah. there's actually like a big gap because the Amber List uh, yeah. was formed in 2017. Mm -hmm. There so is a massive like, gap. A huge, sort of like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So when the when the record deal thing um, collapsed, um, it was a case because. You know, I didn't have a job because um, I was a musician, so um, it was full time. So that was that, and I'm just myself and my wife were like, "What should we do? Uh, we could do anything." Anyway, we decided we moved back to Preston, family, etc. So we moved back. Um, I was like, "I'm done. I'm retired. I'm not. I'm not doing anything else. I've, I've had enough. I'm, I was a bit burnt out, to be honest, with the music thing. So I'm like, I'm done with this. Uh, I think I lasted about." I think it was about three months and then somebody said actually it was my wife's uh, some, uh, one of my wife's relatives was working with somebody and he was saying oh i'm in a band but we can't get a drummer we can't find a drummer she said oh my cousin's um husband's a drummer i was like he's really good he's played with like you know really big bands and stuff like that um so anyway i've, I've met uh, Matt um, and and brian who's a guitarist out of um, yeah. a band in preston called the red wings so they were all quite young. I say quite young. They were sort of in the early 20s as I was in my 30s, you know, plus 35, whatever I was at the time. Yeah. Um, so I was quite a lot older than them. And they were very much sort of um, that sort of libertines, kind of, you know, that dynamic kind of rough, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. kind of pub, pub, energetic pub music, as I would say. Um uh, but great songwriters, really, really influenced by loads of really good mod uh, bands like Weller and, you know, The Jam and that sort of stuff, Small Faces. And they they did go, I think because they were younger, they'd gone through that Oasis period oh, as well. Yeah. They really yeah. liking Oasis. I, I, I always appreciated Oasis, but I wasn't a massive fan, if you know what I mean. Some of the yeah. early stuff I really liked, but I wasn't that massive a fan. Um Anyway, so I played with them for a while, um, and they were great, really, really nice guys. Um, but, again, it, uh, the record deal thing offered its head, and um, they said, you know, we're going to sign with this um, 
uh, label in Manchester. I was, I was just like, I don't want to do it. I think it's a really bad idea. They're not off. It was like a single deal or something like that. It wasn't anything major. Um, yeah. And I had my own business here at the time. So uh, I got a young family um, and I just thought, I just don't want to. I just don't want to do it. So yeah. I, after about a year and a half, two years, whatever, with the band, as soon as the deal happened, I walked away, and that was it. Then I properly hung my drumsticks up there, and then I, I sold my drum oh. kit, got rid of it. Didn't have oh. anything to do with music at all uh, <laughs> until, <laughs> until until history repeated itself, <laughs> until uh, which we joke about <laughs> all the time. So he actually, Scrub actually phoned me. This is a true story, and I've, he, know, he knows I'm going to say this, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> we've joked about it before. He um, he phoned me up at work. Um, I, mean, I was lecturing in um, a, a college, and uh, he phoned me at work, and he said, um, do you remember a conversation that we had about 25 years ago um, where I said, uh, I'm thinking of stepping away from a band, and would you be interested in sort of taking over kind of thing? I said, yeah, I remember that conversation. He said, well, I'm going to have the same conversation with you now. I was like, right, okay. So, and I was aware of the Amber List. They just sort of start, they kind of just got going, if, if you know what I mean, at that point. Yeah. Um, the first single had come out and they'd been doing some quite decent gigs and stuff like that. Um, anyway, so um, he said, I suppose he was in the band. And he, he told me, he's like, well, Tim's in the band and Tony's in the band. He said, and the other guy, you'll know. I went, who's that? And he said, it's Mick. It's like, Mick Shepard? He's Mick like, Shepard, yeah, yeah, Mick's doing it. I was like, right, okay, fine. Okay, so I said, there's only one problem. I haven't, I don't own a drum kit. I haven't got a drum kit. Um, I have no sticks. I've got nothing. I've sold, I sold it all. I haven't got anything. So um, that was it. I had to go out and um, borrow a, a drum kit. Um, we went and did it did a rehearsal and we yeah. just gelled straight away we just got on and it was like i'd not like missed playing at all it yeah, was like yeah. a, it was like riding a bike i just got straight back onto it um but it was uh it was really nice and the guys were really nice yeah. uh, in the band you know they were really friendly and obviously yeah. mick mix like I, I just picked the conversation up with mick it's like i you know and i probably hadn't seen mick in about 15 years at that time so uh <laughs> It was like we just picked up where we carried on from, and um, it was great, yeah. yeah. Um, it was just gelled, and I like the music, and I like the sound, and we're all that age now where we like doing stuff, and we like playing, and we like making the music, but it's not about yeah. getting a record deal. Making it big. And it's changed. Yeah. We don't need to make it big. It's changed because you don't we, – we, we're happy releasing our – we don't need a record label. Nobody yeah. needs a record yeah. label now like they did 20 years ago. Yeah. We're yeah. doing it so we can put it out ourselves – and we can do our designs, we can do our mixing, we can do everything totally yeah. ourselves. And You've it's got all total our control. Total, control, total control, control of everything. everything. Yeah. But when yeah. you saw, so like seeing Mick Shepherd again, mm. yeah. was it so like, oh, this is Big Red Bus all over again or something like that? <laughs> it was I think we laughed. I think we laughed for about the first five minutes when we got together and he was like, so we're doing this again then, aren't we? I was like, yeah, yeah. It's like nothing's changed. He's like, yeah, stepping into scrub shoes, like, again. I was like, yeah, it's great, isn't it? So, yeah, it was, uh, it was funny. Yeah. But, yeah, as, as I say, I was with scrub last night, and, um, um, yeah, we were chatting for ages. So, yeah, it's uh, it's good. We get on really well. And, uh, yeah. yeah, it was a lovely, lovely thing. And, uh, you know, I mean, he, scrub's the same. He's He's always been moving from doing different bands and doing interesting yeah, stuff yeah. and uh, yeah. you know I, I absolutely love the common cold stuff that they did i thought that was great and I've, the stuff again that i've heard as well that's that's good uh i've not heard yeah, loads of it yeah. but yeah it's great so yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's a funny world. like i was going back again so like being pressed in the land of so like indie you all yeah. seem to know each other anyways you all been so like yeah. been in the band together and yeah you know, well <laughs> well pete brown uh, pete brown and mark whiteside were in a band together um uh well i'll say they supported big red bus they kind of we kind of we take it in turn supporting each other if you know what i mean so one yeah, gig yeah. like they'd headline and we'd support and then and vice then versa to, yeah that's right yeah um, we used to tour together we used to get in like the bus together and go and you know shoot down to you know sheffield or wherever and do a a, a gig you know together um but yeah. it was very much the preston seems quite tight and everybody knew didn't know each other uh one yeah. of the first gigs i ever did uh, dave chambers 
uh, played with us when it with in his first band, which was well, which ended up being Corner Shop eventually. Cool. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so uh, yeah, Jinder. You know, we used to see Jinder every day. Um, you know, <laughs> as at college and yeah. at uni and stuff. So uh, yeah. yeah, you know, who'd so who'd have thought that Jinder. <laughs> he, at the time really wasn't a great guitarist and he was just <laughs> he was experimental and he was really interesting but his um his skills were not great um so yeah he really developed and went on to outsell all of us by a, a long way so i don't know we must have been doing it wrong i think well um so you were born in 27 the ambulance were formed mm. in 2017 but then uh you were gigging so like for a few years and then mm. lockdown or yeah. COVID happened because mm. the first time I actually saw the ambulance was um at the ferret mm. in 20 I think it was 2021 um I think it when, was when, well yeah when when lockdown was lifted and then mm. uh you were supporting the wooden tops and yeah that was great yeah over there as well mm, that's that right was, yeah, I thought it was really, really good. That was amazing that uh, that gig, and um, Mick Shepherd at the mm. time. I didn't. I suppose you know. I don't know if I actually was aware that he was in Big Red Bus at the time, or was it sort of like? Uh, I, I think I was told that he was. In yeah. Big Red Bus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that happens. That happens a lot with Mick. <laughs> Quite frequently, they, we, we were at a function last night and Mick was there and there's loads of people and he'd not seen them for years and they're they all sort of walking in going, Mick? And, uh, you know, it's like, oh, you're a bigger bust. And it was all, it's yeah. always that sort of thing. And it's funny, really, because I think anybody away from this, possibly from this area or that doesn't listen to this type of music specifically, well, a lot of people were going, who, who, Big Red Bus? Never even heard of Big Red Bus. Who the hell are they? <laughs> but, um, it's amazing the spread. Um, I was at, um, just to go off track a little bit, when I was at uni, um, I did quite a practical course and we had like a, I used to do um, design um, stuff. So I was making furniture and doing lots of like uh, three-dimensional design stuff. And yeah. um, I was in the workshop one day and I got chatting to this uh, other student, just random student who wasn't on my course. I didn't know who he was. He didn't know me. So I was just chatting and um, he was. Uh, he said, oh, uh, so what, what music do you listen to? So I was saying, you know, this band, whatever, it's Down Roses, whatever. Um, and then he said, do you know what? He said, my favourite band. He said, I absolutely love them. He said, they only did a couple of records and I never know what happened to them afterwards. I said, go on, who, who is it? And he said, there's a, this band, he said, I think they were from up north called Big Red Bus. And I said, um, are you winding me up? And he said, what do you mean? <laughs> I said, why did you pick Big, Big Red Bus? He went, because I love them. They're fantastic. I said, uh, have you been speaking to somebody that I know? And he went, no. And I said, are you serious? And he went, yeah. I said, I used to be in Big Red Bus. And he was like, no way. I can't believe it. <laughs> Yeah, well, so I told, I listed all the tracks for him. He was like, "Oh my god, you're in Big Red Bus." I went, "Yeah." I said, uh, "Do you want the last single?" He went, "What? They did another one." I went, "Yep." So I gave him, I gave him that one. I yeah, went in the yeah. following day and gave him that one. Oh. He was over the moon. He was like, "My favorite band ever. I love him." And this was like down in Brighton. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah he's from Brighton. So I, it, did, it did travel. You know, it was bizarre. Oh, really god. bizarre. <laughs> No, because I remember the last time I saw you at the Talleyrand, there's mm. actually this this guy who sort of like said to me that he he sort of like said something like because I was at the front as always. Yeah, as always. <laughs> so yeah. Like, and, then, and then he sort of like said to me, uh, that singer looks familiar. Yeah. And I was sort of like saying to him, that's Mick Shepherd from Big Red Boss. I was like, Oh, yeah. you're right. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fun, isn't it? All these years later, and they still people still uh, still pick him out. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, um, right, I've got to say that this is the one that uh, I got it signed as mm. well. So you were you were you mentioned it earlier that even yeah. the um, the artwork mm. uh, for Big Red Bus. Oh, this. Oh, sorry, not Big Red Bus. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Right. Thinking of Big <laughs> the album. Right. Album. That's mm. so the guy who did the um. The artwork is actually from yeah. Preston as well. So yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, he's—I think he's originally from Manchester, but he, he's—he's lived in Preston for for donkey's years. I used to work with him yeah. at the um, at 
a local college, um, and he was one of the print um, print lecturers. Um, uh, <laughs> a very bizarre uh, but true story. I, I I found some of his artwork online. I thought his stuff's fantastic. This is before I knew who he was. Yeah, uh, he's a chap chap called Nick Rhodes, um, and I ordered loads of his prints. And we've got my house. I've got prints by Nick Rhodes all over the house. Love his stuff. His artwork's brilliant. Yeah. Um, anyway, I was on one of these. You know, these social network things called LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. You heard of it's like business yeah, Facebook. I, I, I'm not into that. <laughs> no, I'm not. I wasn't. It was only because of the college thing that I had to go on it. So yeah. um, I went on, and um, it said, "Congratulate Nick Rhodes on his." eighth year at the college i was thinking i work at that college why have i never met this guy before so i walked into the art department and uh, spoke to the head of art. i was the head, head of construction i was a construction lecturer for years uh, so i will, walked into um, the art building and said to the head of art i said uh, have you got a guy called nick rhodes who works here and he went oh yeah yeah he said he's in he's in that room next door i was like i've never met him I said, I've been here for 14 years and I've never met him. He went, he just keeps himself to himself. I was like, where is he? So anyway, I went and met him. And as soon as I walked in, he, he, he went, oh, Simon Jurist. He went, you've bought loads of my artwork, haven't you? Oh. He said, I felt bad charging your postage because you only live around the corner from me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, charming. Thanks very much. Oh, so anyway, we moved it off from one thing and another. And um he, yeah. he put, I mean, his artwork was great, and I suggested to the band because obviously he's a big music. Um, uh, he works with a lot of musicians, so he, he's yeah, been yeah. doing stuff for. He's just finished doing Richard Hawley's uh, tour poster, I think, or album cover. Oh, I don't know which one it is, but he's done Eagles of Death Metal, Queens of the Stone Age, Ian Brown. Um, uh, he's done loads of stuff for the Arctic Monkeys. He's done um, Flaming Lips. He's done loads of stuff with Flaming Lips. He's really good friends with Wayne Coyne um, as well out of Flaming Lips. Um, so he's, but he's just, he's always brilliant. So uh, I said, we've got to get him to do the artwork for this. Um, and, an, and another friend of mine, actually, um, who did all the sort of graphics and typography, he's, he's another great local artist, but he he's another, you know, a designer that works with all these amazing people. He's doing... Um, you know, big clients down in London and stuff like that. But he's done loads of things over the years. Uh, a guy called Stephen Caton from Source Creative um, that he does like our logo and he does all the stuff with us. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's great. I and he's the logo, you know, I love the logo by the way. It's really Thank good. Thank you. But yeah, that, so that's, that's Stephen's work. He, we had the idea, yeah. but he kind of refined it and he does a lot of the typography and things. Uh, but yeah, he yeah. works on all our release, pretty much all our releases. There's a couple that I did. Because uh, I have got like a sort of art background, so I did a couple of the yeah, bits yeah. of artwork. But all the newer stuff is all done by Stephen. Yeah, he's a good friend of yeah. mine. So yeah, I'm gonna sort of like I forgot to ask you the Ambulance. So mm. they were already going before you joined them because mm. Scrub, Scrub was the original yeah Scrub started it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where did that come? Where did the name come from? Do you know? Like... Yeah, I do. It's. Um, it was apparently the I have looked this up actually, but it was a while ago. It apparently there's three states for um bird um what is it population. So the green list is the ones that are totally common, like pigeons and stuff like that. There's the amber list, which is the ones that are slightly at risk, so ones that are likely to go extinct, uh, or you know, ones that are um it's, it's the habitats are um, under threat or something like that yeah, yeah. and then there's a red list which are the ones that are literally there's only a few of them left that are going to become oh, extinct so it was yeah. a it's a rspb royal society of protection of birds category apparently for the uh for birds that's oh, where it came from. that's what i've been told anyway it might know. be a load of rubbish they might have just made it up and told me that but so that's, that's what that's they said it's got the three birds so that's like the birds and... yeah we always use the birds and so I yeah. I can't figure out what the other one is. So like next to the three birds, is that it looks the, like. This, well, there's three birds, and there's another bird that's upside down. Yeah, that's so, what I thought. Like, well, I thought there was four of us as well, so it was kind of a good. Oh. <laughs> you know, we thought, well, there's four of us, and we always argued about which one was the one that was upside down. <laughs> but now it's like a. Um, there's only three of you now, because when I saw you there's... for the first time, there were four of you. Yeah, that's but right. Yeah. The last time, yeah, the last time I saw you was. Oh. There were only just three. 
And um, yeah. I, I gotta say that another fan, I, I'm sure he's a big fan of yours as well, Malcolm, Malcolm Wyatt. He mm. always thought like uh, goes yeah. to your. Uh, Malcolm's I think great. That's where I, yeah, that's where I saw him or I met him at the first time at the Wooden Box yeah. game in um, yeah. the Ferret in Preston. But yeah. I found out because he's he's got this sort like um, I don't know what you call it, a blog or something. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's Wyatt, Wyatt Riots. Wyatt Riots, yeah. 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 I, I read got a lot of his so like articles mm. there. And um I found out from one of the articles that he wrote about um the Amberlist that mm. you do sometimes you do cover versions. <laughs> and very, yes. I, I was like, I very that. rarely. Yeah, well, I think I've seen you three times already, but I don't remember mm. so like you doing any cover versions, but what I was going to ask you is, we yeah. we spoke of sort like we talk about um, Mick Shepherd from Big mm. Red Boss quite a lot, mm. but another member of the Amberlist, mm. Tony Cornwall, mm. mm. I've got to say, because originally I'm from the Philippines, as mm. as you're aware, as you know, mm. Um, mm -hmm. and in the Philippines, there's so many record collectors who are mm. after uh, Tony's former band, so like X yeah. band. Which is Voice of America? Yeah, that single I will tell. Yeah, it's really so like well sought after by Filipino record collectors. Yeah, and um, what I'm going to ask you is, you know, if you do covers, is there any chance? <laughs> <laughs> well, that that would be down to Tony. That would be down to Tony. Uh, is there you know, any it's... chance maybe the ambulance would do a cover of I Will Tell? <laughs> right. Well, I tell you what. Because it's you, Anna, uh, and you've asked very nicely. I'll have a word with Tony and see what we can do. If, uh, funny you should mention Malcolm and covers. Malcolm wrote in one of his articles um, something like, oh, uh, the song was great, and it's just I, I can really imagine the Amberlist doing Cinnamon Girl by Neil Young because yeah, it would really okay. suit their sound. So anyway, yeah. we thought, oh, we're just going to have to do it. We're gonna. If Malcolm said it, we're going to have to do it because – if we knew that he was coming to this gig that we were doing in uh, in Preston recently, um, so we we, re we rehearsed it. And we don't do covers very much at all. Um, we, actually, we did a gig last night. We did a couple of covers because it was a friends. It was friends who wanted some covers doing, so we did. But it was really alien to us to do them. But we did Cinnamon Girl for him. We just went, Malcolm, this is for you, and yeah. then uh, and then did it. And he was like, Oh, great! I told you, told you, told you'd get it well. You know, it sounds great <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, so I'll ask Tony. Yeah, his, uh, his Voice of America story is really interesting. It's uh, he's it, it's you know it's like a parallel with the sort of stuff that I've done. It's like you know he's gone from big record labels things and then not quite happening yeah. and then you know it's all it's just there's so much of that in music it's crazy yeah well i've got to make sure that i've got my um video or my camera phone ready if you're gonna do i will tell because i'm right. sure the filipino sort of like music fans would love to see so like a version of that so. right well soon as <laughs> soon as we finish this i'll get on the phone to uh, tony and see if he can remember it I'm sure he will be able to remember it because he's uh, he's very good at doing that. But I'm sort of like thinking, I wonder if Mick Shepherd would actually so sort of like say yes. To it. Hopefully he will do. But um, one thing that I've actually um, noticed is you haven't got a presence on Discogs yet. Because no. how many have you have you released how many uh, albums and singles or like physical formats have you released? Mm, quite a lot. Um... I'm trying to think now. We've got we only had the album out last year. We've got about I think it's four EPs and about three, three or four singles. We've got um we've actually got coming out. Well, I'm say coming out this week. Hopefully, um, yeah. our, uh, we have an electronic publishing um, deal thing, and um, there's a bit of a delay in the minute. At the minute, I think all the New Year releases are, are bottlenecked slightly, and it's not come out yet. Um, we've got an acoustic album which we've never done well, a acoustic album it's an acoustic ep which we've never done before and it's yeah, totally yeah. live we recorded it we did a gig in um um what was an old library in um pen with them in preston and it's all acoustic so it's tony's yeah. on his electric guitar but mick's playing the acoustic and i'm doing percussion and we're all singing yeah. on it but it's 
totally live. It's recorded straight from the desk. Uh, we just we, we weren't planning on doing it. We just recorded it just in case it turned out like nicely. So yeah, yeah. we'll listen back to it. And it was like, this sounds great. This, why don't we just put it out? So it's called Quiet in the Library, um, volume one, because we've got a few other tracks which we're going to put out as volume two. Um, but it's yeah, it's there's no overdubs, there's nothing, it's literally straight out of the desk, yeah, and that's yeah. it. So, um, and that's hopefully should be coming out this week, maybe. I'm fingers crossed, but it'll be on social media all over the place. Oh, but it's us, us nice and quiet, you know, for a change. So, uh, yeah. but, you know. oh, I look forward to that one. It was all yeah. like the, when I'm trying to sort of look, look it up on Discord, so it's like, how come they haven't got any sort of like entry on Discord? <clears throat> and when I'm trying to sort of like um google your name because yeah i mean jewhurst is not really a common surname is it and then uh, it's not too bad but it was all like i saw a couple of simon jewhurst and one of his is sort of like an oboe player he it is yeah he's like, a famous oboe player that's right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that one. Was all like thinking, that no, one. no that's not him and then there's that's another not one me. like no. yeah there's a photographer as well somewhere that in... yeah he's a big one yeah. <laughs> yeah, as well yeah no, i think good myself i had to I think... I had to yeah, do it because I I obviously I'm a teacher. You know, I was saying about talking about being a teacher before. Yeah. Because yeah. we have to have everything on private settings on everything that we have. Um, the only stuff that shows up for me generally is things to do with the Amber list. But all my personal stuff, it doesn't really show up. I've blocked everything because I'm a teacher. So yeah, I have to yeah. be careful with all of that. But it's got to be sort of like any Wikipedians out there that you've mm. got to like have <clears throat> a, a, an entry, the Ambulus or Simon and Mix. Yeah, or, or I guess we could do that. We'll, yeah, I'll end yeah. up doing it eventually. I know. We'll, but yeah, yeah, we will do. Don't worry. <laughs> Well, um, I know we've sort of like, I hope you're not going anywhere <laughs> or you're not rushing to go out. No, but I'm I fine. still have a few questions to ask okay, you. But yeah, I, wanted to, I wanted to sort of like, because you mentioned that you're a teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, it's something to do with like, no, this is um, quite new to me. It's like DT and ICT. I looked it yeah. up. It says yeah. design, design tech. Design technology, yeah. And, uh, I do a little bit of I yeah I do a bit of IT sort of into yeah, sort of computing type things, uh, but that's kind of a small por portion of what I do. My main my main job role is I teach design technology, so my my degree the, when I was um, down uh, down south, yeah, uh, I did was actually in three dimensional design. So that was that was my. Oh, wow. Qualification is I'm a three dimensional designer. Um, yeah. I didn't really use it very much because I ended up being um, in construction, and uh, for the last 14 years, up till about a year ago, I was a lecturer um, at uh, Further Education College, uh, teaching construction. So I'll be teaching yeah, like yeah, uh, craft yeah. trades and painting and architecture and stuff like that. And then um, just over a year ago, I decided that I wanted to change. And I'd never taught in schools before. I taught, um, you know, quite young children um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at college, but I'd not actually taught school children. So uh, I now work as a design technology teacher at a, uh, it's a specialist secondary school. Um, it's not a regular secondary school, but it's a specialist one. Um, it's yeah. a, what they call a PRU, which is a referral unit. So if you um, if you get uh, asked to leave a school, mainstream school, they uh, they have to send you somewhere. So they usually come to us, which is a oh, okay. we're a big PRU in uh, Preston. If you're in Preston, yeah. you'll know you'll know what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. it's, uh, it's quite a well known place, but it's not everybody's. Yeah. It's got it did have a quite a poor reputation but it's an absolutely great place and the staff are all lovely and we all yeah, love yeah. working with the kids they're, they're all great but it but, does have challenges yeah well do, do they know that you're a rock star that you're a drummer or... a couple of them a couple of them do I, it's there's a lot of safeguarding and a lot of sort of um um we have to keep a lot of information to ourselves. It's 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 much better if we don't share too much with anybody. There, there is one of my sort of like year eleven class, sort of like my older GCSE class. There's a couple in there who do know that um, you know I've had a music career and I'm, I'm and I'm in a band and stuff. In fact, one of them one of them said, uh, "Hey, sir, I uh, I looked your stuff up on uh, YouTube the other day, and I was like, all right, and he went, it's really good.' I was like, "Oh, thanks very much." <laughs> 
And she said, uh, I'm not going to keep watching it, though, because I think that would be a bit weird uh, with you being my teacher and all. And I was like, no, that's totally fine. <laughs> I'm all right with that. Don't worry about it. She was like, if, if you weren't my teacher, I'd think you were great. I was like, all right, nice one. <laughs> Okay. But she yeah. did. She did like it. So, but yeah, it's it's good. You know, um, they're just interesting. I like working with kids. They're uh, yeah, yeah. Very, very yeah. Uh, challenging, but they're they're good fun generally. Yeah. I suppose it's so like what what <laughs> from what you told me, the police song came to mind too. <laughs> you know that don't stand so close mm. to me. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that's yeah. all like something similar to that one, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a because of the type of school that it is. There's so much in the way of um, sort of safeguarding and you know protecting yeah, yeah. Of those of those children. It's uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, we have to be very guarded with everything that we do. So we don't. I don't really talk about family, and I don't talk about a lot of things outside. There's certain ones that you can share yeah, with the yeah, older ones, yeah. but yeah, it's very uh, very weird situation. <laughs> it's not a regular school. Very yeah. small class sizes, and it's all um, very intense. But some of the work they produce is just brilliant. They're yeah. brilliant, brilliant kids on the whole. Yeah. Well, do you so like? Uh, have you shown them a bit of your drumming skills? Or... No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. They wouldn't like that. I don't think. Um, I do actually on a on a Wednesday um, after school. <laughs> Sounds awful. I have, I do an after school club. Um, I do a uh, rock guitar. Um, so oh. we basically do electric guitar. So I'm not a great guitarist, but I can kind of muddle through a little bit. I mean, I don't play around Tony because Tony's just Tony's better with one <laughs> finger than I am with all of mine. Um, but I do show them some basic um stuff. Um, a friend of mine, um, uh, unfortunately recently passed away. But he um, donated, uh, his family have donated a lot of stuff to the school. So we've yeah. got like a little studio set up um, <clears throat> and a couple of guitars, like brand new guitars. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I had a couple of spare guitars. Um, I've, as a drummer, I've got way too many guitars. I've got one, that's one there. Uh, I've got loads of guitars. Um, so I get a couple of spares. So I take it in and I take a class and we do, you know, Beatles and we do um, Nirvana and we do all that sort of stuff. I've asked them what they want to learn to play. And, um, you know, the, they're quite n nice kids and they're like, Oh, I wish we could yeah. play some Nirvana, sir. Do you know how to play Nirvana? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite oh, straightforward, you know? And then yeah. we've, they've never, they don't have access to a lot of things. Nobody's got guitars in the house. Um, you know, so, I mean, when I was a kid, there was always a guitar around. Somebody always had a guitar. My dad had one. He didn't really play it. You know, I went to my uncle's house. There was a guitar there. Nobody yeah, really, really yeah. played it, but there was always one around. So yeah. uh, it doesn't seem to be like that anymore so much. But um, yeah. yeah, so I teach them some basics, the chords, and we plug it into an amp, and they love it. So uh, yeah, it's quite you cool. You never know. Maybe one of them will become so like big in the future. Or something, yeah, you know? I hope I mean, so. It's I you who so. taught them how to. Yeah, yeah. No, maybe. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get a studio. Like a real, we've got the studio sort of uh, coming together in the next couple of weeks. We hopefully get this studio done because I want to start yeah. doing some like you know music therapy with some of them. Because they're into all sorts of like rap and hip hop type of stuff, and uh, you know, yeah. I've I've got studio setups. I've not been doing stuff like that for years. So I want to work with them and get them doing, you know, producing, you know, maybe sort of street music or grime or drill or whatever they want to do. But I, I'm quite happy to work with them to, you know, express themselves because they just don't get yeah. a chance to do yeah. anything like that in in the environment that I teach in. So it'd be good. Well, that's, that's brilliant. Yeah, mm. that's that's very good actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, um. I was going to say that um, the Ambulance nominated as Best Indie Band mm. by Radio Wigwam. That's <clears throat> incredible. I mean, it what is. was your thought? <laughs> like, I know. That came out of the blue. We didn't expect that at all. That was, yeah, um, yeah that was great. It's, um, it's a really weird situation where we've got, we get played so much on online radio stations uh, even you know like in american stations we get picked up uh there's one called lonely oak they play us about three times a week wigwam players nearly every day at least one of our tracks gets played nearly every day on there um there's about another half a dozen radio stations and they they're we're always being played on those radio stations they love it 
Um, yeah. But I mean, Wigwam are fantastic. They've always supported everything that they've, we've done. Um, and then they just sent us an email saying you've been we're nominating you for the best indie band. Yeah. And there's yeah. not that many in the there's not that many in the category. So um, and they've, they've put a lot of awards out and they put a lot of nominations out, but for, you know, like for folk or duo or international artist yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Um, but for our category, I think it's about twelve. Um, and so we're like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's just absolutely fantastic. And the playlist and stuff, and they're putting it out, and you know, anything that's promoting um, the music, it's it's fantastic. Yeah. We, we love what they do. Yeah. Well, congratulations on that one. I just when I saw it, I was like, oh wow, mm. that's incredible. You know, to well, get fingers, that fingers so, crossed. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, it's not um, been it's I, not been uh, it's not been said yet who's who's actually won it yet. So we don't know we don't know who the winner is yet. I think it's the end of well, the month. Yeah, fingers. Yeah, fingers, fingers crossed. crossed yeah. And, yeah, but I know that you're gonna have um, that you're doing a gig in heaven bridge soon mm -hmm. but before yep. i actually ask you then you can invite so like our friends to so like join you there or so like see you um yep. i've got so sort of, like these questions that i always ask the drummer so on the show okay. one of them is like do you twirl because do you know i've been my first <laughs> my first two gigs this year yeah i've seen drummers so like i saw one last night and he's absolutely amazing he's a young yep. kid and he was doing mm -hmm. all these Twirling and then yeah. playing and everything. So, do you do that? No, no, <laughs> no, I don't. I like to keep hold of my drumsticks. I don't. Uh, I don't twirl them around. I might occasionally give one a bit of a spin or something, but like it's only just keeping my fingers moving. I don't. I don't do the twirly drumstick thing at all. I don't. I th I, I've got all respect for people that do do that, but I don't. Uh, don't go in for it. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just incredible because sometimes you know that like there's like a gap between, and then they do flip it or throw yeah. it, and then yeah, boom, do it and, it and then fun. flip it, and then do another yeah. beat. So I, I just yeah. think it's absolutely amazing when drummers do that, and I love it. <laughs> well, just for you, I'll start learning it. <laughs> <laughs> 52 years old and i'll start learning how to do that yeah. well um, another question i wanted to ask you is have you ever had any sort of like accidents or disasters i call them when you <laughs> <laughs> yeah um actually it was the um it was the second you know saying about doing the the uh the forum uh, the town yeah. country club in kentish town with the sword yeah, supporting the sword doctors yeah, supporting yeah. the sword doctors the second night um it was, it was like it was in slow motion. It was like something out of a film. Um, I'm playing away, and it was quite a like really fast song. And um, all of a sudden, I was like, "Why is there why is there no bass drum? Like, why is there no kick drum sound?" Yeah, yeah. And I looked down, and the the beater off the top of the kick drum had disconnected itself. And as I looked up, I could see it rolling off the end of the stage. It had shot off the end of the drum, uh, off my kick pedal, and it had like was rolling away off the end of the stage. <laughs> so it was great. Luckily, I think it was. I think it must have been the last song, or next to last song, or something. But I was yeah. just like, oh god, because um, <laughs> it's like you lose the kick drum, and that's like ninety percent of the of the sound yeah, that you hear yeah. when you're getting it live. So uh yeah, that was that was funny. That was doing well, one. What about the sound people? Did they not so they like, must have been like, like what's going on? <laughs> but it actually <laughs> fell off, not just it didn't disconnect oh, or anything, it just like popped straight off and went over the stage. <laughs> um yeah, no, there's only um one more occasion when I was in uh, this Preston band called the Red Wings, uh our lead singer used to get really um into it like each shirt would come off and he'd start diving around everywhere and um yeah every now and then he'd sort of eye you up and i'd think don't jump on me don't jump on the drum kit don't jump. <laughs> and he'd and he'd then sort of like shirt come off and he'd like run over and like throw himself onto the drum kit and all the cymbals and everything would come crashing down and it was very rock and roll but um yeah that was about it really but yeah oh, that's the only funny thing i can uh, really remember is the bass pedal falling off but cool. you've not you've not hurt yourself or anything, no so like, No, not doing that. No. <laughs> no, just a normal bad back from carrying all the drums around. Yeah, um any drumming heroes about from I think you yeah. Um well I so said John's John Densmore from the doors, I really like him. Um 
Who was the other one? Uh, Jim Capaldi, actually, from Traffic. Do you remember oh, the band right. Traffic? Yeah, but Jim Capaldi. Yeah, he's so like, isn't he a singer as well? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's a singer. Yeah. He's a great drummer, but he's he's got yeah. a, another one. He's another feel um, drummer. He kind of goes with the the vibe and speeds up and slows down and has a has a real sort of. He's kind of jazz uh, yeah. as yeah. well, but it's um, yeah, I love that sort of thing. Um, I mean, obviously, I love John Bonham as well. I, Led Zeppelin, everybody does, every drummer does, because he's just got the he's just got the chops, hasn't he, really? Um yeah. but I wouldn't say he's one that I aspire to or, or anything. He's just I really like his style and his, his drum sounds incredible. Um but um I always like he always got a bad rap a lot of time from indie drummers. He's like Stuart Copeland. Stuart Copeland's an awesome oh. drummer. He's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Um but um I think because of his uh you know, he's quite jazz and, you know, very fast and lots of fills and very sort of moves around the kit a lot. Um, yeah. He kind of gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes, but I, and it's the police, which are, again, you know, some people yeah. are not as keen on, but I, I really like him. I think the, he's a great, great drummer, but yeah. yeah so yeah. yeah, they're my major ones really, but um, yeah, I, I kind of like just getting the job done, you know what I mean? So it's, uh it's all about yeah. filth. Really. And not really not really be asked to do a paradiddle or something. Paradiddle, no, no, no paradiddle. <laughs> no paradiddle. Or any of the, those other things that I don't even know what they're called. Or any of those yeah. rudiments or something. Yeah, that's, that's what they're called, yeah. yeah. I don't do any of those. Yeah. Have you got any um, advice, so like aspiring drummers or musicians out there? Because I know that you're teaching yeah. kids now, so like yeah. things. Have you uh... got... Uh, advice to them don't the only thing i'd say is literally just do it just don't ignore what everybody says just just go and do it if it's if it's something that you're getting pleasure out of doing no matter if you think it's good or bad or weird or you know people are like what are you doing just just do it have a go at it and then you will eventually i think find your way of of what it is that you like to do, I, yeah. I think once you've got a certain sense about what it is that you're trying to, what you've done, and you can appraise what it is that you've done, and you can think, I yeah, I like doing that, but no, I don't like doing that. You know, then you, yeah, I've left bands. I've been in a couple of other bands as well over the years, and I've I've been playing with them for a bit, and then they've the music style has changed, or the yeah. the songs have moved to another area, and I'm just thinking, I just. I don't like that. Don't I don't want, want to yeah, be playing yeah. that. It's not that I, it's not me. It's just that it's not something that I enjoy. So um, life's too short. Life's really, really too short to That's, like yeah, that is regret true. those sort of things. So you've got to just grab it when you can. Just Absolutely. Right, yeah. I never say no to anything pretty much. And somebody will ask me, can you do that? Do you want to do that? I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, no problem. I'll yeah. Do all the time. YOLO, as they say, as the kids Ooh, say. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, I mentioned earlier that you're going to be playing in Hampton mm. Bridge on yeah. the 21st of mm -hmm. January. That's in yep. two, week, two weeks' time. Yeah, about um, two weeks. I'm yeah. Actually, I love Hampton Bridge, but I normally mm. just go to the Trades Club. Trades, I've not heard yeah. of this venue before. It's called Muse Music and Love Cafe. How, yeah. how far or how so like near is it from the Trades Club? Um, it, I'm not entirely oh, sure, to be honest okay. with you. No, it's, okay. it's not far away. I mean, it's not that big a place, is it, Ebden Bridge? Yeah. Um, I can't. I don't know, to be honest with you. Um, I know the venue um, is, is. It's not a massive venue, um, but it's um, it's it's a record shop. So they've got yeah. ra oh, racks of vinyl. Shop. Yeah, it's a record oh, shop. They've got okay. racks of vinyl, and it's a cafe. Yeah. Um, it's you know, it's Ebden Bridge. It's one of those cool. Cool places, you know. It's cool. They do, they do cappuccinos, they do food, and they they sell records. So yeah, uh, yeah. and it's cool to hang out there. So it's a great place. But they've, um, yeah, I mean they've had some good artists on there before. We're we're doing a full acoustic set there. Um, so yeah, we're all going to be singing. I'll be doing the percussion. Tony will be doing yeah. his atmospheres and effects and stuff like that. And Mick will be, you know on the acoustic um we're really looking forward to it i've had loads of messages about it as well i think it's going to be it's going to be quite busy i yeah. think i've had quite a few 
probably about half a dozen at least DMs in the last couple of days about you know what time you're on and the tickets and stuff like yeah. that. So that yeah, really thing? looking forward. It, it's a donation on the door. It's not um, no tickets on this oh, one at all. Yeah. So, oh, right. yeah. yeah. So it should oh. be good. Looks like it's a, a cool venue. Uh, looks like there's cool yeah. people running it. So yeah, I'm really well, looking forward to that. Thing, so I would have, I would have loved to sort of like go there on a Saturday, but I think it's like an early start, isn't it? It's like uh, bro, uh, I think we're doing this about seven o'clock. I think oh, half, seven six, seven, yeah, seven. I think yeah. Saturdays, I work on Saturdays. It's like right. going from Manchester and then right. ha- well from King B in Shorten and then going mm. to Manchester and then getting the train from Manchester mm. to Southern Bridge. I was all yeah. like thinking I probably won't get there, you know, it's like, and I don't know how long you're gonna be sort of like playing there if it was a sort of like a record shop or something. Um, we're doing, I think we're doing quite a bit. I think we're doing a couple yeah, of sets. Yeah. So, um, but I, I'll be honest with you, we've been we're discussing this recently. I think because a lot of places, it's quite difficult to get um, like live, you know, full band gigs. Um, yeah. It's getting, it seems to be getting more and more difficult to get them. Um, and then obviously, there's a big backlog after COVID uh, of all these bands trying to get out and get playing and stuff. It's a bit, it's a bit of a packed market at the moment. Yeah. But what we're, what we're kind of trying to do a little bit more as well is to do is because we we've always done it, but not necessarily people know about it is the sort of acoustic stuff because um, Mick writes a lot of his stuff acoustically. Uh, and I know yeah, Tony, yeah. you know, he enjoys doing that sort of stuff. Um, so we're trying to build the acoustic side a little bit as well. I'm working like using sort of a sampler and trying to build up some kind of effects and things like that as well to do something a little bit um, sort of different, if you will. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And it's nice because we can then go into these smaller venues and, um, you know, there's a few cafes. Yeah. We've done a couple in Preston recently. We're trying to get um, a couple more organised quite soon as well. Um, we, well, I might, I'll, I'll say this because we were discussing it last night, but Mark uh, Whiteside, he's been asking, one-sided horse, he's been asking to play with us. We should do a double header. Um, oh, so we might do um, a show with him, um, yeah, yeah. probably in Preston somewhere. We've got friends who've got venues in Preston, so we might yeah. we might do one with him. But yeah, we're trying to just build it up, and it's we can get out and play more. It's less gear, it's less set up, it's quicker, it's easier, and it's playing to you know we're we're about playing to people. You know what I mean? So yeah, we can the more we can get about is better for us, really. Yeah, I've not seen you do this sort of like acoustic, no. but it would be nice to sort of like say yeah. it. But hopefully, I mean, there'll be loads of opportunity, <laughs> don't worry. Yeah, yeah, there'll be loads of opportunity. It's just like Saturdays after work, like last night. <clears> I was saying <throat> to my husband, I'm really not feeling it. So, like, yeah. it's raining, it was wet. Mm. It was, uh, I said to him, but I've got to go. <laughs> I've got to, it's only in Manchester, anyways. And, yeah. you know, it's always like as soon as you get to the venue, Mm. All of a sudden, your energy level goes up. Like, yeah, it's, true. It's really nothing true. like live music. So no. we'll see what happens on Saturday. But hopefully, I will get to see that the Amber List acoustic. Yeah. From yeah. Well, we'll we'll yeah. hopefully uh, have a, quite a few more gigs coming up. So uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Oh my god, I hope it's all like I didn't take up so much of your time. But I, I mean. I don't really talk much in real life. <laughs> it's just, I don't, I mean, no, I don't sort of like get to ask um, the musicians, like the drummers, when I mm. see them live. It's because sometimes, you know, um, you see other fans wanting to speak to the musicians as well. Yeah. So you don't want to take up a lot of their time. But with Ask the mm. Drummer, it's fine because at least I've got the drummers all to one. It's not when I can ask them about <laughs> their life. And well, especially when they're like me, when they're a massive egotist as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, it's I'm, my favourite topic, honestly. Myself is my <laughs> literally my favourite topic. So ask anybody that knows me, they'll be like, "Yeah, yeah, he never shuts up." Honestly, <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, thank you so much, Simon. I really, really appreciate you. Oh, no, it's so been fantastic. Drama, and um, I hope to see you. I mean, so anyone who's in Hebden Bridge on Saturday yeah. the twenty first, you know, check out that. Um, yep. Muse Music and Love Cafe because they'll be yeah. there doing an acoustic set. Um, so yeah, thank you and thank you. big love to the Amber List. So because and hope to see you again soon. Yes, absolutely. Bye-bye.
Okay. Thanks, Anna. Bye. 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 Oh my God. Thank you so much, everyone. That was just amazing. I mean, I really, I really do love that band. I love the Amberless. And uh, you've got to go and see them. Uh, I've seen them sort of like doing, not the acoustic one, but I'm really looking forward to seeing that. But anyways, yeah, thanks to Simon and thanks to um, uh, the Amberless. And so like, I'm really looking forward to them doing a cover of Voice of America's I Will Tell, because I think the Filipinos would love that as well. But hopefully, fingers crossed. But anyways, yeah, thank you so much for joining us live. And um, uh, please do keep an eye out for next week's uh, Ask the Drummer um, guest, guest announcement post. But um, yeah, uh, it's now. <laughs> So like all of a sudden, all of a sudden my head is just going everywhere. It's it's kind of I can't believe it. It's actually 2024. 20, but anyway, so I'll see you all next week. And remember, love music, love life, and love, love, love drummers. I really do think they're the coolest or some of the coolest people on this planet. So I'll see you all next week. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.